What's up everyone and welcome to Svak FAQ 171. I almost said Swola, but we're not doing a Swola today. This is an FAQ 171. Hope you're having a good day. I took out my M2 ESP. Ooh, I like this guitar. It's a good one. We're gonna head straight into the questions. Thank you. Starting with Halo0919. Fuck, hi Ola Grains from South Wales. Can you recommend a budget or mid-range price camera that is good for recording gigs? My son's band is looking for something that will have good quality video and audio for social media uploads. Also, any plans for Fear of the Haunted uh, to tour in the UK anytime soon? Thanks. Thank you so much for that question. Uh, very nice. Uh, regards of Feared and the Haunted in the UK. Feared, uh, very small chance of ever touring. Uh, it's not a touring band. UK, definitely, there's definitely a chance. But I think we have to release an album before that uh, might happen or we, before we have a chance even. So in regards of a budget uh, camera, I don't have too much experience with smaller budget cameras. However, I can recommend a camera that's uh, called the Sony Cybershot. So I have, I have a camera here. This right here is the Sony, I think it's Z1 or something like that, which is uh, basically an updated version of something called a Sony uh, RX100. Even though this is definitely not considered being a budget camera, it's probably like a, a thousand euros or something like that. Their previous models, the RX100 uh, like uh, 3 and 4, you can get those for a pretty good price. So I looked up the RX 103. Uh, I don't know when this is from, like uh, 2015 or something like that. Uh, you can get this for like 500 euros. That's basically the only budget or like budget camera I can give a tip of. And I can definitely recommend these. I'm also using one for uh, a previous one of these uh, for my live streaming. And it's a really good solid small compact camera and uh, I'm using this particular one for just vlogging now and when I just want to make a quick shot I just can bring it out I can hold it in my hand I can have, a, have it on a gimbal it's just really easy to carry around and uh, this one shoots in 4k too 4k 25 which is just my it's my main output uh, format when I do videos you know have you have you what how many no. Have you ever considered using your phone? Because an iPhone like this, like, you know, the, the uh, past four years worth of iPhone, they're really good, man. The cameras are really good and the audio capturing for, at least for shows, is really good on the iPhone. I brought this a fair bit of times so, and, you know, when I take out the, the camera on a gig, I film a little bit. I'm actually quite surprised of how good the audio is when you record something with, you know, your mobile phone. There, it's probably more likely that you already have an iPhone or like a Samsung or something like that that you can already film with. You just need to have like a tripod that you can fit it on and then you can film it using your phone, basically. I think that would probably be the best option right there because then you don't have to go out and purchase a dedicated camera. Just saying, phones are really good nowadays, man. But this is also really good, just saying. JSG1138, how can I get that guitar wall? Did you make it yourself? Great question. He's talking about this guitar wall. And uh, I did not make the wall myself. However, these uh, you see these panels that, that it has. That's basically just store panels. So as you can see here, these are, I think, six store panels with uh, slots in them. It's basically panels for guitar stores. You can get these, like if you want to have like a storefront panel. Uh, there's a plenty of stores that are selling these. Uh, I bought six of them for this wall, put them together, and then you can buy these guitar stands that you uh, basically fit in these. So, uh, you know, this is not a fixed set of guitar, uh, you know, setup right here. I can move them around as I want. It's, it's really cool and it makes the wall look really f***ing sick, just say. So these walls, or I think it's called slat walls or something, you can get those. You can buy those. You just put them on the wall, man. Doesn't it look great? No? Hello, camera. Freddy Overbite. I know I'm probably late to the party, but has anyone ever noticed that if Ola got all of his haircut off, off and was slightly balding, he would look like Leon Kowalski from Blade Runner? Oh shit, we need to figure this out. Brian James. Brian James. Oh yeah, okay. I hear you. Yeah, I can see it. Look at that. That does look like me. You're right. <laughs> Shit. Oh my god. No, 
You know what? He looks way more badass than me. Look at this face right there. That's a face of... of... Uh, I don't know. It's a face. This particular picture right here is from Blade Runner. And uh, yeah, man. I, 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 can, I can see the resemblance. Okay? I can see the resemblance. Thank you. Brian Rockwell. Fact. Quarantine presented the opportunity for me to grow my hair out for the first time in my life. Also, I just got a Judas Priest tattoo and a Van Halen tattoo during the same session. Does that make me super cool, Mel Dad, that the youths are too lame to understand? Or just a super lame old guy? Asking for a friend. Now, these are the legit questions. <laughs> Holy shit. Now, obviously, you're cool as f man. But that's also me. I'm 40 years old. I'm... I'm not young. You know, I think you're cool, man. But you know, the younglings, they probably think you suck. Just saying. But that's okay. We don't care, man. We're old. You, you just stop caring when you're old. Brandon Jackson. Fakola. Do you ever have off days? What I mean is yesterday you felt like you made some real progress on something you were working on. And the next day or session, you all of a sudden feel like you can't play anything right. Much less a milestone you were proud of achieving a few days ago. I try to play a little every day. And sometimes when I pick up, I'm just off or something. It's really frustrating. And I'm also coming back to seriously playing after years of not really playing much. Thanks to your channel, I got excited about playing guitar again. Thank you for the cool content and motivation. Thank you so much. Very kind words. Uh, yes, I absolutely have these off days. Uh, and they come quite often, I must say. They do come very, very often. But what I do at that time is that I acknowledge that it's a shit day for me. And then I just go do something else. Like sometimes if I'm sitting writing a solo, I'm just like, okay, I'm not getting anywhere with this. I go do something else. I probably do sit and write emails or something like that. Or if you feel in, like completely uninspired, go play a video game, man. Do something that makes you happy. You know, spend time with your kids or your dog or something like that. That usually helps. If I feel incredibly unmotivated when I'm doing something, then it's not the time to do it. So I quickly realize that, okay, this is not the time. I'll go do something else. And that's how I become very effective and very efficient with what I'm doing. And, you know, a lot of people are saying that it seems that I'm, I'm working a lot. Yes, I am working a lot, but I'm also trying to work very efficient as well. Which means that if I recognize a situation where I'm not motivated, I just do something else for a while, come back, do it later. So uh, it's just to have more uh, irons in, you know, have more iron in the, the oven. Is that, is, that, is that an expression? Just to have more, a lot of things happening at the same time. Does that make sense? Great. I'm pointing at you with a file. Just saying. Kristen Keita. Fuck, is there any video footage of your first live gig? Your hair is, is having an amazing day, by the way. Thank you. What, what a nice guy. Uh, not on the fly, but I do think there is some old feared uh, live videos. Uh, like this one, for instance, from 2008. Uh, March 29, 2008. This is me in the, you know, non-lit area. And this, this was the first feared show that we did. So, uh, uh, this was really good and way before HD, man. This is not high definition at all. Our drummer was left-handed, that was Henrik. And then we had Christian on bass, it's Mario, and then me, I'm playing uh, uh, Dean Cadillac, I think. And probably an English Savage, because that was the main app I was using a lot. I mean, Feared was a live band back in the day, believe it or not. Nowadays, we just, you know, we just do the album, so that's it, basically. Uh, I'll, you know, I'll put a link to this video up in the description, you can check it out if you want. Um, great. Oscar Krasikis. Fuck, is it possible to get a headless solar at some point, or should I just go and buy Strandberg? Just go buy Strandberg, okay? <laughs> the Bat Pope. Fuck, hi Ola, you beautiful bastard. Do you have any advice for a beginner songwriter that ends up hating or being embarrassed by everything that they come up with? Excellent question, and uh, a, a problem that I can definitely recognize myself in. You know when you sit and write something and you feel like, holy shit, this is really awful. <laughs> That happens a lot, I can tell you that. But it happened way more back in the day when, uh, you know, I hadn't practiced as much on songwriting. But today, you know, from having all these years of me trying to write riffs, it's making it a lot easier for me to recognize if a riff is good or bad. But I can give you a great tip on how to get over this problem. Even though you think you have shit riffs, I think it's really important to just go with it. Let it be a shit riff for a while. You need to have those shitty riffs to have the great riffs, okay? So, a good way of doing this, and this is something I've been doing for the past two years since I started Swola, is I, I just write something every week. Doesn't matter if it's shit, I'm gonna put it out there anyways on the Sunday with Ola. And there's definitely been a lot of times where I've uploaded a Sunday with Ola where I feel like, holy shit, this sucks. This is really terrible. Anyways, I get it out of my system and it's out there 
people can say whatever they want about it but at least it's out of my system and then the next folder I might come up with something really cool so you know you just have to understand that to create those great riffs you have to write the shitty ones as well so they're still very important my recommendation do these Sunday with all the riff challenges every week man it just pushes you to write something just get it out of your system good up what will we do? fact can we get an amp shootout with some bass apps? please and thanks great idea bass amps fuck no thank you Plisca Nation, back from the dead, fuck, hey Allah why do you... so many companies elect to put non-fret markers on their pro models I want a pro model but I'm not that great and need reference points plus it's part of what makes them look cool and the brand's different Jackson shark fins, Ibanez shark teeth, Gibson blocks so I often see a guitar that has everything I want except for that that's a legit question, I think I've answered this before uh, for instance this guitar doesn't have any fret markers uh, uh, except for the solar inlay at the 12th fret a lot of people are asking why don't you have fret markers well the thing is that we do actually have fret markers it's just on the side of the guitar they're called side dots and uh, in my opinion when you play guitar you sit and play like this and you have the guitar in front of you like this I don't see the fretboard I'm not sitting like this playing when you play guitar and you stand like this you're just gonna see the side of the guitar you don't sit like this playing, right? <coughs> so you still have the side dots and that's, uh, that's the navigation for you right there I'm just saying, this is just how I think I mean, I sit with the guitar like this and I see the side dots and that's enough for me just saying I don't sit watching the fretboard like this maybe I did when I was a beginner you know, I, I don't know I don't know, I just think it looks sicker when there's no fret dots or fret markers I like the side dots that's where it's at you, you can still manage, you know, you have the side dots just saying for me it's a matter of just uh, making the guitar look cooler in my opinion I, I, I think uh, a blank fretboard looks way cooler than uh, just having a bunch of fret markers just saying very subjective, thank you so much for the question Carl Blanchette, fuck Ola, have you ever shat your pants in a hotel room? okay, next question uh, all right, next question. So, Ola, what's the story with the hotel bed? Okay, okay. So, in the uh, one of the previous FAQs, uh, we talked about shitting the bed, and I said that it might have happened or not. It, it, has, it, it has happened. I have shit the bed once. You know, it's not really a common thing that I shit the bed. I've done it once, and it wasn't really a shit, anyways. I was in Colombia, and I think it was a it was a clinic tour in Colombia, and I was in Bogota, and there was something I have eaten for dinner and then I had a clinic and then I went to the hotel and you know I went to bed and I'm like oh, okay I'm, oh, I'm just gonna fart a little bit and you know the fart was something else so it wasn't a complete shit in the bed but it made brown stains in the bed you say fortunate for me it was a king size bed so I just laid on the other side <laughs> fucking disgusting but there you go you wanted the dirty news, there it is you know that's probably gonna end up on ultimate guitar or something they just take everything I say and write it up there <laughs> just saying they're cool though, I like ultimate it'll give you to it Bad Blood 44 fuck, Ola, during live shows what would you estimate your overall accuracy to be? what I mean is how often do you play an incorrect note or miss the timing relatively to the rest of the band? I imagine the mistakes are few and far between and the audience can't even tell they're made but after play of the instrument I must imagine there are a, fi a few minor gaffes you prefer to have to do over with thanks that's a great question and uh, maybe not a lot of uh, guitar players answer this question but uh, yes, there's, there are definitely a lot of mistakes when playing live for me, not so much the, uh, the timing cues uh, in regards to playing with a drummer uh, I think I have a pretty good relationship with uh, what, whoever drummer I'm playing with in terms of rhythm I think the parts where I f*** it up is if I like miss a note or a bend in like a solo or something it, usually it's... It, people don't notice I notice it and you know, I, I just laugh it off because it, you know, it happens it happens, but no one's gonna... no one's gonna notice it anyways I think that as a band we probably make more mistakes together than me making mistakes live but then again, I've also always prepared a lot to play live so I over prepare before we go to a haunted gig for it so I over practice so I won't make the mistakes and that's the way... that's the way to do it man and also a very important thing that I do before I go and do a show is that I always play every solo before I go up and play on stage that reminds myself and it's, it's a reminder for myself every day about the solo so I don't get surprised when I actually play the solo live later so that's a trick I do I just play through all the solos of all the songs before the gig 
and then there's there are no surprises when I'm playing the gig. Kind of cool one. J so next to FAQ. Hola, which MacBook are you using and why are you using as a DAW? Okay, so this is a MacBook Air right here. This is a M1 MacBook Air. This is basically my bring everywhere computer. It's lightweight. It does everything. I can edit 4K videos on this thing. I can record shit on this thing. It's a really good computer. Using Logic and Final Cut Pro, I can vouch for the M1 Max. They're really good with the uh, with those programs. I mean, they're catered for those apps, which are, you know, it's Apple apps. I'm using it here to read the questions and, you know, I can bring it into a room, use it for recording or something. But I'm also using this uh, Mac Studio. That's basically the, uh, the my main computer right now uh, that I use for main editing and recording in here. But then, if I want to record something in the other room, I just bring this and hook it up to my Apogee uh, element interface in there and just record on there. It is really good as a mobile setup to just walk around with this. Wherever I need to record, I just bring in this. I plug in uh, whatever audio interface I have there uh, or like one of these, the UAD arrow, just bring it there and record. It's very mobile, very awesome. And then here for this room where I sit and edit the most and I record the most and uh, write music and mix and all that, I have this Mac Studio that's doing the job really well. And I'm using Logic Pro X for DAW. Okay, I've, I've been using that since like 2006 or something like that. And uh, yes. Floridian Frasher, possibly important question. Was there any jobs before music you had to work your way up and buy your gear? Yes, obviously. I started doing this in 2012. I quit my last real, you know, serious day job as an accountant to focus on my YouTube channel and then eventually solo guitars and all my endeavors and all that. But up until that point, I had been working probably 12 years, at, you know, regular day jobs, making money, paying rent, all of that, you know, putting all my extra money aside to buy shit and equipment. A lot of people might be jealous of all the stuff that I have, but you have to take into account that I have been working for a lot of years. I have collected a lot of things throughout the years. And also, this right here is not my stuff. It's my company stuff. So all this, all the things that are in here, those are not my, these are not my private guitars, except for, uh, except for my Dyne 3ST, the uh, Dyne bolt over there, the Washburn guitar over there. Uh, the dime guitar over there, and also my Fender Stratocaster that I bought for, for my birthday. In here, those are the only guitars that I personally own, and uh, some of these are guitars that I've had for a long time. Not the Fender Stratocaster, but at least these, and the uh, Dying 3 ST. So a lot of people are probably thinking like, oh, you know, Ola is very rich, and you know, he buys whatever he wants. But you have to understand that uh, the company and Ola England are two different entities. I have a regular salary that's pretty, uh, pretty normal. I would say. And then this, this is just the company stuff. Now, the best part about this is that since it's my company, I get to play all this shit. Does that make sense? <laughs> yeah. And that, my friends, was the last question for this FAQ. If you have any more questions, please put them in the comment section of this video. Also, if you want to support me, oldlangmanshop.com, buy a t shirt or something. Thank you so much for watching. There's a burp coming, but I'm. Uh, uh, goodbye. <laughs>